All right, today we're going to be taking a look at improving the layer adhesion of your 3D prints. So I printed this thing off, I went to go install it, and it just, yeah. And this is even after being uh, acetone smooth. So one of the first things I noticed about this is it did print those really thin walls with infill, and they probably should have just been solid. Uh, also, my printer... It'd probably do a little bit better if the extrusion multiplier was up just a bit. But I bet I can break this whole thing off without any issues. Yeah, even after being soaked in acetone, it's still really quite bad. So I made some improvements to this model. We're going to go ahead and reprint it. But uh, I'm going to change up my software a little bit and do some experimentation and see if we can't get this to be a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here. We've got our model. We're going to go ahead and export this or save it as an STL and send it over to Repetier Host. So then we can take a look at some of the settings. And I'll go ahead and place this in the correct orientation, which should be something like this. Put this somewhere. All right, so looking at Slicer, I'm actually going to switch over to using Slicer, the Prusa edition of Slicer specifically. So we're going to the config for this. It's going to take a minute to open. Um, okay, so the first layer height, that's all going to be about the same. I'm just curious to see what Slicer will do to this. So we can do the normal rectilinear infill. We'll see what it actually does. You know, all this stuff should be okay. I just want to see what this actually looks like. I'm going to change the filament settings a bit too. And we're going to save this one as okay. Printer settings. That's all the same. All right. So we're just going to see how well slicer will handle this. Let me just save this. Okay. And we go here. We'll just see how Slicer handles this compared to how Cura handles it. Because we can look at it of course before beforehand if we show a single layer. Well, that's not really infill, is it? It's just a gap. <laughs> so you can kind of see how it's infilling in the corners, but it's just a gap in the middle, really, with Slicer. Looks like there's... Oh, well, that's just how this is in there. It's a big hole right there. Uh, anyway, this might work better, but... Still seems a little bit sketchy. This 0.8 millimeter wall, maybe, it ain't the greatest thing. All right, so we're gonna go with Slicer this time. We're just gonna trust it. I know it has an air gap in this, which is kind of weird. You can see that there. Uh, but we're just gonna leave it because even putting it on 100% infill doesn't do anything. Now this is a really thin walled uh, model. It's only I think 0.08 inches or something like that. But we're going to go ahead and trust that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the extrusion multiplier when we go to print. I'm going to change the uh, the flow rate to 110%, and that should help us quite a bit, actually. Uh, so anyhow, other than that, I'm already printing it like 235 degrees, which is pretty hot. I might up it to 240 and see what happens, but... Uh, Anyway, we'll have to print it and see what we get.
All right, so this is the new part. Uh, for whatever reason, when it first came off the printer, it had a lot of stringing to it, so I kind of broke that stuff off. The print quality, not really the greatest. It's got some roughness in the uh, in the layers there. It might just be because the walls that I've printed are probably too thin, especially like this part that's really bad. It's just uh, really rough looking, but it is strong like before when I put just a little bit of pressure on that that thing just snapped I could break this off really easily this piece doesn't want to break too easily at all so quite happy with that it's a great improvement over this one even though uh, this one was acetone smooth so anyway that's that I also made some improvements to the model I put a little cutout down here so that when you put your phone in it the buttons actually sit down in that cutout and don't get pushed. So anyway, that's how I improved the layer adhesion in my models. I noticed that this does still have some cracks in it, like up here that didn't stick very well. So basically all I did was uh, switch over to Slicer instead of Cura, which printed the walls like completely solid. So that worked a decent bit better. I also upped the temperature, which might be part of the reason why these uh, layers look so melty and don't look very good. Uh, but anyway, I think this part will work a lot better than the old one. So uh, that's about it for now, guys. Bye.